Hey everyone, it's Kelly here, your online art coach and crafty instructor. Welcome back to my channel. You are in the right place if you are a creator, an artist, or a crafter. And in today's video, I am going to show you a fun a warm up painting. I know that a lot of us are very tough on ourselves, and this is my way of creating some fast and easy um, types of paintings to get me in my creative mood. So stick around and paint along with me. Hi, I'm Kelly Chassie. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I have new videos every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you click that subscribe button, click the little bell, and you'll never miss one. I also have full monthly online classes and tutorials on my website at www.kellychassiefineart.com. And I do have over 10,000 students and over 15 years of experience teaching art classes. If you want to watch more in-depth ways to create with alcohol, ink, watercolor, or resin, make sure to head over to my classes and check them out. Hey everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm so excited to share with you guys today a fun a little warm-up painting that I did. Now you guys, if you've been following my channel, you know I love to do warm-up paintings. I try to do at least 15 minutes a day. This one actually took me 19 minutes and a little bit longer than my normal, but I, I'm using masking fluid for this one and I had to wait for that to dry. And um, so there's a little bit more, more to it, but this is just all about playing. So if you've taken any of my online classes, you know that's my, my key to life is play. So many people take art as um, something that's very therapeutic for them, very creative, and it's an outlet. So it really should be fun. It shouldn't be stressful. And a way to do that is by playing. So trying out new things, um, you know, that's how you learn. That's how uh, new ideas come to you. So if you have some things that you haven't tried before, pull them out and give them a shot. See what they're going to do, how they'll work with with your style or maybe create even a different style for you. So warm up paintings is what I really uh, try to do as my playtime. So it's a great way to warm up, trying new things and experimenting. So today I have my masking fluid. You can see I used my metal palette scraper. And I just put down the masking fluid using that. Always fun to see how these things progress because I, all I did was pick two colors and I knew I was going to use masking fluid. I knew I was going to use the palette and I didn't know where I was going to go from there. So I'm trying Bombay inks today rather than watercolor. And you can see I've spritzed my paper once my masking fluid was dry. Spritzed that with just some water and I'm just actually taking that dropper and dropping in the color. And you can see how it makes this really neat design. Now this is going to blend a little bit here in a second, but this is just getting my ink down on the paper. This would be cool if I just let this dry like this. It's, um, you know, it gives you that really neat looking pattern in there. So I have um, some with a little bit of silver in it. So it's a um, calligraphy color. So I'm just shaking the bottle up now and see if I can get a little bit of that silver tone in there. I think my bottle's actually getting a little old. I've had this one for a while and that paint is really stuck on the bottom there. So it doesn't have a whole lot of silver, but I've got a little bit in here. So I'm adding that to it. So this one is blue and the other one was more of a teal color. And you can see that that didn't move quite as much. So I'm just going to spritz it with some more water here and get these things moving, moving in, shaking. And let's just try the palette knife. I'm just going to drag this across and see what colors I can get to mix. Now this is where I notice I have a lot of masking fluid on here. Using that palette knife really uh, laid it on here pretty thick. Which is interesting. So I'm, you can see where it's not really sticking to the paper and that's where my masking fluid is. So I've got a lot, a lot of excess water here that I'm just going to clean up using my little cloth. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to dry this and we'll be right back. So here we are, we're back. You can see that it really blended a lot. It didn't get much of that dramatic look that I was looking for once it all dried and it moved around and blended a little bit too much. 
I think I had too much water on there, but it's still a really pretty color. And you can see again where the masking fluid is. So we're going to use our watercolor brush. And now I have some black Windsor Newton gouache. And I decided we're going to make some trees. I'm doing a black and blue here. Kind of an icy look to it. And I love to do trees. I mean, I live in Maine, so I'm always doing seascapes, landscapes. I guess I'm preparing my mind for this long winter that we'll be going into here shortly. The leaves have just about all fallen here. It was a beautiful fall, though. Oh, my goodness. The colors are amazing. So I think in another few weeks, really, we've got our boats out. And I think the ice will be coming in um, within the next month or so. I'll keep you posted though. But so this is my blue ice. This was what I've decided to go with for this. <laughs> so I, I'm going to put a little bit more of the trees in here. And I, I'm noticing as I'm painting, I've got again a lot of the masking fluid on here. So I'm not sure how much of this is actually going to show through. So we may need to do a little bit more. And you can see where it's uh, just laying on top of that masking fluid. So I'm end up wiping a lot of this off, but still, again, it gives you that uh, a neat texture underneath. I'm going to define the tops of those trees just a little bit more. And if you are um, getting ready for winter yourself and you were thinking about doing your holiday cards, I have a, a couple of really cute classes on my website that I did last year. One was a cardinal, there's another one with holly berries and snow, and then there is another one that is um, similar to this one with trees and snow. So um, feel free to head over there and check those out. I've got them as a mini course on there. So I am just going to keep adding a little bit more here. Again, I'm painting some of this area here that actually has the masking fluid on it, so when I peel this off, we'll see what we get. So I'm going to dry this and we'll be back and peel off that masking fluid. All right, so this is all dry. I'm just going to take my finger and remove the masking. I find this is really easy to do, especially with the Windsor Newton masking fluid. It comes off really nicely. I've tried other brands before and they're horrible. They just stick right to the paper. But I will say this, if you're using masking fluid, I have a video, my tips on masking fluid. You can check that out up here. Um, masking fluid you don't want to leave it on there for a really long period of time and you don't want to heat it up too much if you're going to use it a blow dryer to dry it quickly uh, because it does tend to stick and if you leave it on for too long it's really hard to remove but the Windsor Newton is really good quality and I've really never had an issue with removing my masking fluid if I've had to wait a little bit so it's really um, really fun to work with and they actually have one that's more of an orangey color so you can really see it a little bit better when you're working with stuff so as you can see I wiped off a lot <laughs> There is not much paint left on this little spot. So I had a lot more on there than I thought I did. And I have been just, just checking to make sure I've got all of the masking off. Because I want to make sure I'm not going to uh, remove anything else afterward. So we'll just wipe that off. Get all of that gummy stuff off the table here. I hope you guys can hear the rain. It's pouring here. We lost power the other night, actually, from a windstorm. It was only for a couple hours. Some folks lost it for like a couple days, though. We have a generator, and I love my generator. It's my first official generator that kicks in when the power goes off, but Alexa wakes us up in the morning because we have all our lights set up to it, so she kicks on. <laughs> we figured, though, we can get, actually get her to turn off, and... If you do, if, I guess if you lose the power twice, though, then it resets. So all of our lights came on at about 2 o'clock this morning, which is pretty funny. But it's all right. We just wait for the Wi-Fi to reboot, and then we tell them to turn it off. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to grab my fan brush and just see if I can create some just some real fun, whimsy-looking trees. I'm going to turn my brush just a little bit sideways. And you can see this is a really fun way to make trees if you don't want to have uh, too much perfection in your trees. Um, just by tapping that fan brush and it makes the little leaves right or the branches and I guess they're leaves or pine needles right, right on the page for you, which is really cool. 
And this one's a fairly big fan brush. They have some smaller ones, but this is one I had on my table today. So this is what I'm using. And I'm trying to get just the side because it is such a big fan brush. Just getting the corner of the brush as I'm making these trees. And I'm going to fill in some of this white space because we have so much of it. I like the blue and the black together, though. What do you think? You can click that like button and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the color combo here. Black and blue, like a bruise. Oh, that's not a good way to think of it, is it? I like blue ice better. We'll, we'll go with blue ice. Let's put another one in here. I feel like I'm um, Bob Rossing it now. My happy little trees. Now, usually my fan brush this is actually the one I use usually for my oil paints. So it's a little stiffer. <laughs> and just tapping in a few more down here just to add a little bit of texture I don't like that one little spot here where it's a big white I, have, I can still see the shape of the palette knife <laughs> I'll fill that in a little bit more maybe a little black down here just for some shadows kind of icy and cold doesn't it in a happy way and then add a little bit more on the bottom here all right so let's go ahead and dry this and then we're going to come back with some white gouache and we're going to add some snow onto this so if you're not familiar with how I create snow again check out my online classes I use white gouache for snow all the time um, it's one of my favorite ways to do it. it. It's quick, it's easy, and you can use it in with the masking fluid. Like you can see, I do the masking fluid first, but now I'm going to pop in right on top of those black trees some snow and dotting that on there. Again, just tap, tap, tap. I learned that from my mother. She's always saying that tap, tap, tap. You can see how fast I move along. I'm just throwing it on there. Because we all know snow lands exactly where it wants to go, right? You can see my consistency of my gouache paint is still a little thick. As this dries, it tends it's a it can be very transparent, but it's actually an opaque, chalky type of paint. Um, so if you get too much water in there, it becomes more translucent. So you want that fairly thick. You do want to add some water to it. You don't want it like toothpaste. And I'm just tapping in some of the snow like it's snow on the ground. You can also use a toothbrush for this. Drag a little bit more on the bottom here so it turns a little grayish. It's not quite as dark. And voila. We have a we have a uh, finish warm up painting. It was super fun to do. I need to grab my iced coffee. Move things aside here, and now it's time to remove the tape. Let's see what we get. This is all dry now. I went ahead and blow dried it one more time. And some people will tell you not to use blue painters tape because it does throw the eye off, especially if you're trying to match colors or things like that. But for uh, my warmer paintings, even for my paintings, the blue doesn't bother me. But for some people, you, uh, they like to use like just the masking tape. But I noticed that some of the masking tape will actually tear my uh, Windsor or my Arches watercolor paper. So I use 140 press. It's cold press. It's got a little bit of a tooth to it. And I like it for doing these type of paintings with a little bit of texture in them. So and there's the finished piece. Let's grab a mat and just throw that on top. So much fun. I hope you guys have a chance to play and just entertain yourself. Paint for yourself. It's very important. My friend Cheryl Williams um, said that to me. She's another artist and um, she works with Alcoholics as well. And she does some fabulous stuff. And she's got some great classes and actually I have them on my blog. I'll put the link down below for you. She's got um, a beginner class um, and she's got level two and level three, which is, I think a two is her water scenes and things. And then three is pet portraits and stuff. So um, she's got some great classes on there if you want to check out her classes for alcohol inks. 
So cheers. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'm going to grab some more of my iced coffee and continue to play a little more. I hope you guys have a great week. Don't forget to click that like and share button. Remember sharing is caring. And when you click that like button, that helps me grow my channel and it reaches more people. And I can do more of these things for you guys because let's just face it without um, having people watch, what's the sense of doing it, right? <laughs> So if you want to continue to watch the channel and we want to continue to grow, uh, make sure to give that a thumbs up and a share if you get a chance. And we will see you guys uh, next time. Take care. Bye-bye.